Shalom, and welcome to another weekly Bible study as we continually rightly divide the Word of Yahweh as a workman. Now, the, the studies that, or Lord willing, the studies is coming in the near future uh, are going to be uh, in, relation to, in relationship to the seventh month, or the feast of the Lord in the seventh month. We've got trumpets. Uh, then on um, the tenth day of the seventh month, we have the Day of Atonement, which is a very, very important day in prophecy. Uh, and then we have uh, Sukkot on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, or the Feast of Booths or uh, Tabernacles. So now on our Enoch calendar today would be the on the Enoch calendar today is the uh, Thursday. The fifth day of the first month, excuse me, the fifth day of the sixth month on the Enoch calendar. Now on the Gregorian calendar, uh, today is Thursday, uh, let's see, on the Gregorian, yes, today is Thursday, August the 25th. So today on the Gregorian calendar is August the Thursday, August the 25th. 2016 on the Enoch calendar. Uh, today is the fifth day of the sixth month. So very important there. I know I've been given the uh, days of the Enoch and I've been getting some response and say, well, tell us what day that is on the Gregorian. So uh, I'll start giving both dates and so therefore you'll know what the Enoch calendar and the uh, Gregorian calendar. Now, we're going to be looking at uh, a very a verse that in Hebrews uh, that's very controversial. There's a lot of teaching, especially in the Hebrew roots. I've listened to some of the rabbis, so to speak, or call themselves rabbis. I don't believe you should call a teacher only rabbi, the great rabbi is Yeshua. But... Listen to some of their teachers. Of course, uh, this all, all all relates to. There's a lot about the two witnesses now, especially that comes from this one guy in Israel. Won't call his name, but he's quoting a lot of Old Testament Hebrew. But I think that he is uh, off track to some degree because of uh, he's got Moses as one of the two witnesses now. There's a lot of teaching on Moses and Elijah, Elijah and Enoch, uh, but this guy is a huge, huge Moses, and he thinks he's uh, discovered Scripture uh, in the Old Testament. It reveals that Moses will come back again uh, as a Messianic prophecy before, uh, right before the Lord returns, but. I've taught on the two witnesses. I don't think it's that hard to understand who they are, but evidently there's a lot of controversy there. But I, we are commanded to listen to the Lord. I teach that very much. If you, You've got to follow what the Messiah says. And we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. Uh, and then we're going to go to Hebrews 9th chapter and hopefully we're going to un unveil or unpack something there that's very paramount to what we're going to be talking about, the two witnesses and the Enoch calendar. So uh, several things uh, as we move into the seventh month here, the Lord is revealed. And of course, I want to pass it on to those that are following the Messiah. Uh, and see the, because the mystery there, as I've said before, uh, those that are raised at the last day, uh, being the 12 hour day on uh, Enoch's calendar, and then you've got a gathering of the people, the two houses when the Messiah sits his feet on the Mount of Olives in that day, uh, which will 
be Passover of the Jubilee year. So when when I'm teaching or when people say, well, Larry, uh, we've got all these things, so the Lord's opened up all these, uh, revealed these things, last day, in that day, 12-hour day, Lazarus resurrection, uh, the calendar, but how do we know what Shemitah year it is? How do we know if this is a Jubilee year or not a Jubilee year? Well, uh, the marker people is going to be the two witnesses. Now, when the two witnesses stand up, uh, they will stand up in opposition of the uh, man of sin or the son of perdition and the, the beast ruler system. And so that prophecy, when they stand up for those that are alive and understand the prophecy, that's the last three and a half years, and the two witnesses will die after the 1260 days of testimony, and then three and a half days later, that's three and a half days, and that would be the middle of the day. It wouldn't be three nights and three days. It'd be three and a half days, and in the middle of the day, the Ruach uh, comes in them. They stand up. Great fear comes on the remnant there, those in Jerusalem. And then there's a voice out of heaven that says, come up to this place. Come up hither. The Greek word means there's a place there, not the third heaven. They come up they are send it up in a cloud. So uh, very important is we got to break down these these times and when these trumpets are going off and what trumpet is going off and what trumpet means this and or the sound of that and so there is this is very very detailed uh, information or as the Lord reveals his prophecy I will tell you that the trumpet that goes off that raises the body of the Messiah, or those that are alive and remain, are changed in that day, the last day. That's not the trumpet that sounds in Revelation 11 after the two witnesses are killed and then they, the, the Ruach comes in and they stand up and they go up hither. Then you have the great earthquake. That's when the Lord gets here. Then the seventh trumpet sounds. So that's a that's, uh, that has, that has two different prophecies. The trumpet that raises or is blown at the end of the 364 day and the trumpet that's blown in Revelation 11 after the earthquake when the Messiah gets here, that seventh trump, when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of the Messiah, that is uh, also, but it has a, that trumpet also has a meaning of why it's blown then and the trumpet that blows at the 364th day to resurrect his uh, glorified saints or changed into angels. He said, those that are found worthy in the resurrection, they're like the angels, they don't die anymore and they're deathless. So you have two different trumpets and two different gatherings. And we'll get all into that as we break and unpack all these things we will be talking about as we bring these uh, all this stuff that I'm, all of these scriptures I'm going to tie in have to do with the two witnesses, the time factor, the days, the when they die, when they stand on their feet. Uh, it also has to blow on the trumpet of the resurrected dead; those who uh, are asleep in Christ. And then the seventh trumpet blowing, and it all has to do with the mystery of uh, God there in Revelation 10, 7, the mystery and the sounding of the trumpet and the, the sounding of the seventh trump and the days of the sounding of the seventh trump. And when that trump is sounded in Revelation 11, the mystery of God is complete that was given to his servants and his prophets. So that's, what's, uh, that's what we're going to unpack. That's what we're going to unveil. But we're going to back up here at this time. And we're going to look when, when the Messiah was here. He, this is after the resurrection. And he's talking to his disciples. And they've been fishing all night. So, And they cast the net. And they ate. 
as they come in and caught all these fishes and then they ate with the Messiah, then the Messiah is talking to them. This is the third time that he has come to these apostles after his resurrection. So let's pick it up here in uh, John 21, 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, walkest whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou stretch out forth thy hands, and another gird thee, and carry it whither thou wouldest not. And now uh, Christ is prophesying to Peter that he's also going to die a death. Uh, he's going to be martyred to glorify God, and he is telling him that he's going to die later on that Peter will die and of course uh, 2119 verifies what I just said this spake he signified what death he should glorify God and when he had spoken this he said to him follow me now of course Peter once the Messiah had said that now this is after the resurrection y'all this is not on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew 17 when Christ said some of you here will not taste death until I come in my kingdom that's true so now, now after the resurrection, this prophecy is still intact because look what Christ, look what Peter's going to say. Turning about, saith disciple and Jesus loved father, which also leaned on the breast at the, at the Passover supper. He said, "Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee?" And uh, that's back when Judas betrayed that night at the Passover. Well, see, this is after the resurrection. This is before he ascends into, on the 40th day after first fruits. And, and they're having this conversation. And, of course, John is the one that is penning this. He's the one that witnesses it. And that's where you have his account of this in the Apostle John. He's the one that's writing uh, this witness. Okay, Peter... Seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Now, in the context, this man is the same man that leaned on the breast of the supper that Jesus loved. Now, in the scripture, he's called the beloved of the Lord. Uh, now, everybody should know what apostle that Peter is referring to here. Now you telling me I'm going to die at the end. What about this man, John, who you call your beloved? So it's Apostle John, people. Now I don't know how all these people that prophesy that Moses is one of the two witnesses because he is eliminated because Christ said some standing here that won't taste death. Moses died. Now, just like this one uh, Hebrew teacher, he said that he realized that. Now, he, he went to Hebrews 9, 27, in which we're going to go there. And uh, and he said that was all a mistranslation, but I'll, I'll bring that out. It's, it's, but let me say to, the, to all y'all that view in this video that studied the two witnesses or, or are leaning on the fence, Elijah is one of the two witnesses. That's prophesied out of the Old Testament. Elijah will come again. Christ said it in Matthew 17. Elijah truly, future tense, will come. But there's Elijah, he said it already come. That was John the Baptist. He come in the spirit and uh, the power of Elijah. It was John the Baptist and they, he was beheaded. So John the Baptist filled the prophecy of the one crying in the wilderness when he came in his first advent. But Christ said uh, the uh, spirit of Elijah has already come, meaning John the Baptist. But he said right before that, uh, the real Elijah, the prophet, the Tishbite of the Old Testament will come again, future. He hadn't, he hadn't showed up yet. Now all of your Messianics and Jews believe that because they set a, they set a cup at the Passover for him. They set a plate. Okay, now, now, but most of them now are going back to Moses because he was such a great the lawgiver and the Mosaic law and Moses' law. So, but the point being is now Moses told us Deuteronomy the 18th chapter, we're, there's a prophet that's going to rise up and we're supposed to hear him. 
I don't understand why these uh, anybody that's a teacher or, or or teaches prophecy or teaches the gospel. I don't understand why people don't take heed to that. They still want to lean on Moses. Uh, Moses said, there's a prophet like unto me that will stand up and the children of Israel, you hear and obey him, what he has to say. See, now there again, I'm going through this to try to get this, get this message that I'm trying to convey to you. If you think Moses is one of the two witnesses, watch what the Messiah says to Peter right here. Now, we're supposed to hear what the Messiah says. Now, let's see what the Messiah says here. Peter seeing said to Jesus, Lord, what will this man do? In other words, how is he going to die? What's going to happen to him? Look what Yeshua said. Jesus said to him, if I will, if it's my will, that he, John the Beloved, the Apostle John, not the the Mercer John, the Apostle John that's writing uh, the book of John and also writes uh, the book of Revelation and 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, he says, if he will that he tarry till I come, what to thee, Peter, follow me? Now, what did this cause? It caused a great disturbance among the disciples. Because when this saying went abroad among the brethren, that that disciple, meaning John, should not die. Now look what Yahshua said. Now there, the word got back that John was not even going to taste it, that he wasn't going to die. Now look what Yahshua said. Jesus said, not unto him he shall. Jesus said not unto Peter. As the discussion was between Peter and the Lord. He said not unto Peter he shall not die. I didn't tell you Peter that the beloved John. You're one of the beloved John the apostles that you have been serving with. I told you you're going to die. But I didn't say uh, that John wouldn't die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what matter is that to you, Peter? If John lives and then as I come in my kingdom, then he dies, I didn't say he wasn't going to die, but he's not going to die yet. But if it will, that he tarry till I come in the kingdom. Now look what the next verse says. This is the disciple. Who is the disciple? John. Who's writing this book here? John. Which testified of these things. What things? The conversation that Christ had after the third time from catching the fish to telling Peter to feed his sheep three times and then the discussion of who's going to die and who's not going to die, or when they're, uh, they're not going to die until. So this disciple testified of these things. Now look what the scripture says right here, people. And wrote these things, what I've just told you, and we know that his witness testimony is true. Now, People, I mean, this is so, to me, for all you that, if, if you hadn't seen this or recognized the revelation of this, this is so simple. A young child can understand this prophecy if it's told to him correctly. Now, the apostle that is not going to die until he comes in his kingdom is the apostle John. I didn't say it, the Messiah said it. I'm telling you what he said. So I'm not adding to it or taking it down. All these people that want to hold Moses up, then they don't need to teach it. you need to hear. They don't need to teach you need to listen to Moses because Moses said, there's going to be a prophet like unto me stand up. Don't you hear me, you hear him. So 
so why in the world these people, I don't make any difference if who you are. If you don't believe this, then why even you teach the work? I mean, why do you say you love the Messiah? Why do you say uh, you teach the gospel and all that? When you want even as simple and as he said, for anybody to understand that the other witness he's talking about that will not taste death until right before he comes in his kingdom, he's one of the two witnesses of 11th uh, chapter of Revelation. Now, I'll say to anybody out there, if I don't say what I just said to you, please reply to me and tell me what Jesus said. So, tell me what he said. If I'm not if I'm not quoting or teaching what he said, please tell me what he, is Moses, did he say Moses would be here? Did, because Moses died. That's not, I mean, if you don't even know, if nobody's ever showed you this, Moses is eliminated because he tasted death. There's nowhere in the scripture, in anywhere in the scripture, I'm talking about scripture, I'm not talking about, well, uh, don't, don't reply to me and tell me you got a book that some man wrote and said John uh, died of natural causes in the the assembly of Ephesus. No, no, there was all kind of books out there, but but there's one book that we follow. So, according to Scripture, you will not find anywhere in the renewed covenant because the closing book, he's on the island of Patmos uh, as he writes. Uh, the revealing of the Messiah in the book of Revelation. So, now, we got all of the other recordings that all the apostles died. All of the apostles, but we do not have anywhere in Scripture where John, and we do not have anywhere in Scripture where Elijah died. We do not have Elijah in those of by great faith. We, I mean, I mean, we do not have in Scripture. Uh, we have in Scripture him going up in a chariot. That's the first heaven into the clouds. Elijah did not go to the third heaven. No man has descended or ascended. Man. I'm not talking about two-year-old males and under. I'm talking about men, grown men, has ever went to heaven, but the Messiah or come from heaven. Second man. So Elijah and John are yet to stand up. Now I think we're going to see as we go into this prophecy, I'm going to show you according to the calendar, according to the prophecy, when they'll stand up, what day they'll stand up, what day they'll die, what day they'll stand up on their feet. Now uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be on, all of this is divine. But I'm not prophesying uh, the season. I'm going to show you according to the calendar. So when it happens, you'll know. But I'm not saying it's going to be in this uh, feast day, this year, or next year, or the next year. That's why you got to be on watch. But but Lord is, show, is going to give us what day to be looking for as we're on watch. So these things are... Very important, it'll all be proved by scripture and by this Enoch calendar. Whether you don't believe in the Enoch calendar, that's fine. I'm not gonna, uh, these, you got people that they say uh, they're gonna pick at the Enoch calendar, they're gonna say, well, NASA said uh, the spring equinox was on the 21st that year, or the 22nd, but Enoch's always gonna be on the 23rd of March. Well, NASA, well, that's right. If you want to follow man, that's the whole problem because they give the different time zones. They, they have, uh, they've got all kind of uh, uh, corrupt uh, time there. They're close, but the Enoch calendar is perfect. So, uh, so when people say, well, you say that the Enoch calendar says 12 hour days on the 23rd of March, well, I'm following NASA in, uh, in Jerusalem. This year it's on the 22nd. Next year it'll be on the 21st. Well, follow that. I'm not going to argue with that. 
because I, I've already seen too much of the Enoch that fits the scripture. Not NASA, not the Rome Julian calendar, and not Pope Gregory, the Gregory calendar, God's calendar. So now hopefully when we get through the two witnesses when they stand up, there's no other calendar that you're going to be able to see where they prophesy for 1260 days and then are killed and everything fits exactly perfect to God's calendar. So this is some very, very uh, revealing information is coming up soon. Okay, so now understanding right here, if you go back and read this and play this over, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, when people come on, I know who the two witnesses are. Moses is one of them. Well, I mean, then they need to go read this. And uh, then you, they need to say that this disciple which testified these things and wrote these things, we know that his testimony is false because Moses is one of the two witnesses. John's testimony of him talking to the Messiah and the Messiah telling uh, Peter when he's going to die, the other apostles, but John's not until he comes in his kingdom. This is a, this is a lie, people. So this is not true. John's testimony is a lie. That's how that's how uh, that's how ignorant. I mean, how in the world these people think that they're Bible teachers? And right here is as simple as a, a six-year-old child can understand this. If you tell them that, and this right here is one of the witnesses. Elijah's the other. The other thing. Uh, well, let me get to there, and I'll show you why also. Okay, so this is very important. Now, when we when we go to uh, Hebrews, the uh, ninth chapter, let's go to Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and when you read this whole chapter here, it has, it's talking about the uh, sacrifice of animals and this actually has to do uh, with the uh, Holy of Holies and we'll see this. So I want to pick it up down here in verse about verse 20 let's see here uh, oh, right here uh, 24 for the Messiah is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the, are, are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of Elohim for us. He's our heavenly high priest now. Now notice the 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others of the animals here now this has to now verse 25 very important i want to get this in your uh in your spirit now in verse 25 in the context is what the high priest goes in on the tenth day of the seventh month to the holy of holies one time a year year yearly and sprinkles the blood of those sacrificed animals a certain way, seven times this, or on the ark there. In the, in the, there's only the high priest could go in there, and that only happened one time a year. So think about now, what am I referring to here? Let me give you a clue. Day of Atonement, very important. Day of Atonement. This is not trumpets. This is not Passover. This is not any other time of the year. This is the tenth day of the seventh month. Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, which is judgment, people. See, this is judgment. This is when uh, Israel would come before God and the priest, afflict their souls. This is the great day of fast. It's one day. Because tabernacles, five days later, is a day of celebration and praise and honor. But this day is a day of judgment. Very important. Okay, now... Look what in verse 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end, 
when he came, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Okay, now, okay, there's something, just don't read this. Hey, the Spirit, I'm going to ask you a question. You're, the Holy Spirit is guiding and leading you here in this verse here. Now, notice it said that he's, he only did it one time. Put away, uh, by his sacrifice, put away sin. Now, the high priest had to go in there every year. And they had to go in there on the tenth day of the seventh month. Now, let's look at it. For well, then must he have offered since the foundation of the world... But now he's came, words made flesh, and at the end here, when he when he came two thousand years ago, he uh, he appeared. The word was made flesh, so he went to the tree and died to put away sin for, by the sacrifice of himself. He gave it up. He gave up, uh, and and he he was obedient the even to the death of the cross. Okay. Now, right here, you've got to see in 9.26, when did he put away sin? When did, when did that happen? Passover. When he died on the tree, people. That's the 14th day of the first month. Abib, or, or Nisan, the Babylonian month name for Nisan. But that's very important, because what was the context? A day of atonement. But Christ didn't die on the tree on the Day of Atonement. That's when the priest sacrificed year to year. So what's the writer saying? You, this is very. If you miss this, then you're not going to understand the next verse. So Christ put away the sin on the Day of Passover, which they rehearsed killing the lamb for 1,500 years. So Christ is fulfilling the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms, everything's wrote about him. So it's very important that you see that. Don't, don't. Now, the only way you're going to really see that, or if I, like I'm telling you, or you're studying, is you've got to understand the feast days, the prophecy of the feast days, because that's what the whole scripture is about. So if you're in a Sunday worshiper, not throwing rocks at Sunday people, but they don't believe the peace days are important. They don't study them. They don't keep the Sabbath. So whatever prophecy they come up or teach here, and which I'll show you what they teach, there's no way they can see this, what I'm fixing to show you. Okay, so understanding the context of what we're in, very important. This verse is what day did he do this? He done it on Passover. Okay, now let's look at this uh, next verse here. The, very, the famous verse here. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Okay, now, this is quoted out of the King James Bible. Let's look at the uh, Messianic Bible. And just as it is appointed for men to die once, after this, this judgment. It's about as bad a translation as the King James. Let's look at uh, the Jubilee Bible. This is appointed unto man wants to die after this, the judgment. That's all. They're all in the same, pretty much in the same uh, context as the King James. Okay, now what's amazing about this? When you hear preachers or teachers talking about this, they're, t they're saying they use this verse as is appointed for everybody to die. And after you die, unless you're going to heaven, uh, you're, going, you're going to judgment, you're going to hell. That is, that's, not, it's, that's as far away, people, as what, what this Hebrew writer is talking about. You can't get any further away than that. And you say, well, I don't know about it, Larry. I really don't understand you. We'll just hang in there. Now, the context is Christ don't go in yearly anymore. That's been done away with. So there's no sacrifice on the tenth day of atonement. He's entered in once. When did he do that? On Passover. 
Okay, so that's when his sacrifice for the sins of the world or put away sin was when he died on the tree on Passover. We know that's the 14th day of Nisan. We know that's on a Tuesday on Enoch's calendar. We know that's the third day of the week. And we know that three in the Hebrew means, as he said in John 8, uh, John, three or four times there in John, I put a video out on that, that when I be lifted up by means on the cross, I will draw all unto myself. So Christ was prophesying when he'd be lifted up on the third day of the week. Now, what day of the month was it? 14th. What is 14 in Hebrew? It means deliverance. Three means lifted up and divine people. If the light bulbs ain't going on to you, what I've just said to you, uh, when you go read when, you, when Christ was telling them, when I be lifted up, he, they didn't even know what he was talking about. But when did they lift him up on the tree? Now, a lot of people's got Christ dying on the fourth day of the week, Wednesday, fifth or the sixth. When I be lifted up, I'll draw all. Lifted up in the Hebrew to you Hebrew people. It means uh, three, three, it means divine and to be lifted up. So he could have been lifted up and die on the tree on the fourth day. You got it completely. Four is a different number in Hebrew. Five is a different number. Six is a different number. Seven. Now this is according to the Enoch calendar. And that's why the Enoch is correct. If that Enoch calendar understanding uh, the Hebrew, the letters and what they mean, or the numbers and what they mean, if, if that Hebrew calendar had Christ dying and being lifted up on a tree on Wednesday, then we got we got a confrontation. But it's, it's, it fits perfect, people. He died on Tuesday. He was resurrected at the beginning of the Sabbath on, 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 uh, the, seventh, on the seventh day. And at midnight, there was a great cry in Jerusalem and the land. And that's when those saints arose and come out of those virgins and come out of their tombs and there again there was a great cry in Egypt but none of the Egypt Pharaoh gods could resurrect those firstborn children but the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob see and that word cry in the Greek and the Septuagint is the same Greek word isn't that amazing I wonder how I wonder how God I wonder why this all just fits perfect. So, uh, so, but nobody knows who that cry or who these saints are. Isn't it amazing? But the bias just there's all kind of witnesses to that. There's all kind of Hebrew uh, typology because the firstborn of Israel was raised from the dead. The first fruits, the twelve tribes, one hundred forty-four thousand. But the firstborn of Egypt, the destroyer killed their gods. But see, Christ prophesied that in Exodus at Moses at the burning bush. And then Christ brought it right back up in the renewed covenant. Why, y'all? I don't understand. You Hebrew teachers, you can't see that. And I'm not getting, but I mean, what are you looking at? Why don't you follow what he says? See what he says. That's like this right here. Moses is one of the two witnesses. Well, follow what the Messiah said. Moses is out. John is the other. Okay, now, so now here in Hebrews 9, now watch in verse, uh, when we read verse 27 again, and it is appointed unto, the, unto me and wants to die after this judgment. Now this, this uh, teacher in Israel, he is, he is see, what well, he's going back and he's saying the context of verse 26, 25 is all about the Messiah, and it is. And of course, Messiah is singular. But what's stumping this Hebrew teacher, or Israel teacher, is he's saying all of a sudden the translators made men here and it's plural, and he's saying this has all been translated wrong. Let's go back to singular. Now, he has the point that he's using this. And the point is, uh, 
when Paul says that there's some that's going to live unto the coming of the Messiah, not going to even taste death. They're just going to be changed in a moment, twinkling an eye. And that's that's what that's true. He's got a very point there because all men are not going to die. Some are going to survive. So I said, yeah, I believe that. I seen that years ago. I had a problem with this man. Everybody appointed to die. I had to be out because Paul reveals in the mystery that some are not going to die. They're just going to be changed a moment. They're going to go from a mortal to a mortal in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So I agree with his teacher, but what the teacher was having, he was trying to prove that he believes Moses is one of the prophets that's going to stand up, the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. But what, what he did, what he don't see is, and he was saying the translators translated men, plural, when the context is Jesus. That's true. But when you go back and listen to Jesus, he's telling you Elijah's coming and he's telling you John's going to stand up. So J Jesus is pointing to the two witnesses and they will not die until Christ comes in his kingdom. So this is the sign, people, that in other words, there's going to be two witnesses going to stand up and prophesy for three and a half years, and then the mystery of God is complete. So that's that's what this context is. Oh, so 927 is context about the two witnesses? Let me show you something in the Greek, what it says here. Let's look in here, in the Greek here. All right, let's... This is the interlinear uh, here in the Greek. You're going to see here, there is this word 606. It means to be reserved, to figuratively to await or appointed to be laid up. Now what did Christ say? The sun won't take the step. This is the Greek. In other words, they are appointed uh, to be reserved to this time. To the appointed time, and then they will stand up. Uh, they are reserved until this time, and then it says, the Greek says, the men, right here, in the plural masculine, and the men, is, of course, anthropos, and that's in the plural, right here. Right here is the men, but see, the men is not men out there. It's not appointed. For unto the see the translators translated is pointed unto men. No people. Now the Greek people understand. Now this rabbi did not bring this definite article the out because that would ruin his teaching. But he did bring out this. He did say that it's appointed unto. He said now this is wrong. That's mistranslated. Guess what? Guess what, people? It is mistranslated. But see, if the rabbi, I don't know if he knew it, or I don't like calling him rabbi. If this Israel teacher, if he if he goes back and looks at the Greek text, because that's what he was looking at, and he was all fired up because it ain't unto men, anybody to die. He's talking about Yahshua. No, he ain't talking about Yahshua. He's talking about the men, the two witnesses. That's who's got to die. See, they got to prophesy, and then they're going to die. And that guess what? The, this also right here in the Greek, right here, notice. The man, 530 means uh, uh, one uh, death in the word here is meta, and that means uh, a primary position. It's a it's accompaniment. Uh, it means uh, in in association with. Uh, so they have got to die here, but and then this is a conjunction, but uh, and then this tells how 
but how do they die but by this judgment? So the judgment here in the context, people, uh, uh, in the context, the King James has got this so messed up, you'd never figure it Everybody, all the preachers think is pointed once for a man to die and then they're either going to hell or going to heaven. This is not, that ain't even in the, that's not even what this writer's implying. The implying is the Messiah died and rose. But before he comes back, and you're going to see this, we're not done with it, it's appointed for the two witnesses what? Once to die. They have got to die because Christ said, I did not say they wouldn't die. I said they will not die until I come in my camp. Then they're going to die. So these two men, look at the context. The Messiah died. There's going to be some standing here that will not taste death, Elijah and John, and it's a proper time, uh, three and a half years before the Messiah comes, they're going to stand up, prophesy, and after that, the beast is going to kill them, just like Christ said, until, and once that, once they kill them and lie dead in the street three and a half days, then the Ruach uh, comes in them, they stand up, and a voice says, come up hither, and then uh, 14 days later, the Messiah sets his feet on the Mount of Olives and takes over the planet, king of the earth, Zechariah. Uh, 14, 4 through the 21st there, chapter of Zechariah, 14, 3, 4, all the way through 21. Now, the point I'm saying is this is what the context is. Now, the teacher in Israel, he said, no, that's still talking about the side. No, it's not. It's the men, definite article. It's not, it's in the plural because there's two of them. But it's not talking about just any man. He's right about that. But see, he wants to change it back to the Messiah, which he can't see. It's talking about the two witnesses because they've got to prophesy and then they've got to be killed by that the judgment. That's the, How are they going to be killed? By the beast that's going to overcome them and kill them. So that's how they're going to die because the Bible says the beast will make war with them, overcome, and kill them. And that, once they stand up and prophesy, they got 1,260 days, exactly according to Enoch, and then the beast will kill them, and three and a half days later, they stand up on their feet. So this is what this is talking about. Now, let's stay in the context. Let's look at the next verse. Hebrews 9.29. Now he comes back. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now, now watch what's being said here, Peyton. What have I told you about that you've got to understand from 925? This all has to do with the Holy of Holies Christ has entered in. But when did Christ put away sin? On Passover, when he died on the tree. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now what? Now let's look at this. Now if let me let me ask the the people that's following this these teachings. Let me ask you. I have this conversation, even I don't know you, but you could be, I had a lady or somebody sent me an email from Australia, thank you. I hope that you'll get something out of this teaching also. I've had other people, New York, different places, which uh, you're very blessed if you understand the orders of the, those that enter the kingdom because, and when we get these two trumpets here coming up, the two silver trumpets, this is amazing, amazing prophecy, people. It's coming. Now, so let me ask some of you out there. Right here, when it says, so the Messiah was once offered to bear the sins. When was he offered to bear the sins of men? So what, what's, what's the Holy Spirit revealing to you now? 
It was only one day, people. That was Passover. The 14th day of Nisan, that's when he, that's when he offered up himself. Now, when, you, when we go back, see, his context is, Passover is, is so important. Now, when did he, right here, in the end of the world, had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself? He did that 2,000 years ago. Now, then it's appointed for the men. The witnesses have to die. And they have to die. This judgment that they're going to die by is by the beast. The same beast that, that crucified the Messiah. But guess what? Three and a half days later, they stand up. The resurrection. Now, notice. So Christ was once offered to bear the sin. So the Hebrew writer is coming right back here and saying, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Okay, now, uh, people. No, now, if I could talk to you uh, followers out there, what in the world is the second part of this verse of Hebrews 9, 28, 70? What is, what, what is the Holy Spirit wanting you to see here? He's telling you when he's going to appear the second time, but not to be hung on a tree. He's going, to appear, he's going to appear for only those that are looking for his appearing. The second time, he's going to appear without sin, but as king. He's coming to deliver salvation. Not to die for sins, but to deliver those unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. See? And that amazing. And it all has to do with when did he die? And the and the writer is telling you that he's going to appear the second time not to go on the tree, but to sit his feet on the Mount of Olives and to rescue you and bring both houses back in to one step. In other words, uh, the tents of Judah and the and the stake of Joseph will be brought back and he will appear that time, that day is Passover because the context is when did he put away sin? But when he comes back to, uh, to his second advent, he's coming back for those that are looking for his appearing, but it's going to be on that day, people, because that's when he's going to deliver. That's when he's going to deliver. In that day, he's going to deliver the two houses. So this is what this is. That's what this is. How much is in these verses, people? Now, uh, if you have any questions, or uh, there again, for those that are really uh, digging into the scripture now, uh, please reply to me or email me or whatever, and we'll discuss that. But hopefully, I'm, that's why I went real slow, and I keep going back to this point to show you that point to this point. But the thing, the whole thing is, is Christ entered in, but the two witnesses will tarry right before he comes, and then they got to die, and once they die by the judgment of the, by the beast, uh, they, the beast will overcome them and kill them. And then that will bring on the Messiah. That, and that's why that the uh, sounding of the seventh trump and the days of the sounding of the seventh trump, the mystery of God will be completed. And uh, now we're just breaking into this mystery. So there's going to be some things that's in the mystery and what I've just talked to you here about in these verses here. There's going to be some things inside here that I hadn't brought in 
to this uh, so-called package here and but I wanted to get the outlay here of what's happening and what the Hebrew writer's talking about as before we move into the mystery of the last trump. When Paul says, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Well, this, what I've just showed you here, and what I just said, what Paul said, it fits in these parameters, and what a revelation that is. So if any of you have any questions about what I've talked about, be sure to reply or email. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may the Spirit witness your spirit, as we have traded these scriptures in, out of season. As Paul says, in season, out, this is out of season. We have traded these scriptures with one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and come the King. Amen.